And now, please give a huge welcome to three of the funniest people on the planet, Mike Nelson, Bill Corbett, and Kevin Murphy! Thank you so very much. City of Big Shoulders! No, no. Mud <laughs> Butcher to the... Whoa, no, whoa. no, no. Home of the Belgian Waffle! <laughs> no, no. I don't... <laughs> well, hi! Hello, is what he meant to say. And welcome to the Crunchy Awards. <laughs> I am Technical W. Crunch, and these are the awards. <laughs> We are actually Mike Nelson, Bill Corbett, and Kevin Murphy. That's right. Welcome to this night of shorts. We're very excited. The thing about these shorts is uh, it's a great treat for us at Rift Tracks to be able to do it because, you know, it's a break from doing Godzilla with Matthew Broderick. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> nice little bite-sized he, he, thing. He was, a, he was a terrible Godzilla. He was. He was awful. <laughs> the worst. So it's just a great joy to us to sort of buy these things from eBay, open up these dusty boxes. Sometimes a badger comes out, but sometimes great stuff like this comes out, so we hope you enjoy these They tonight. sometimes smell of child urine and fear. Yeah. <laughs> Which is not surprising. And we have a wonderful lineup of guests who we can't uh, wait to bring up, but we're going to. <laughs> we'll force ourselves. We are going to begin this with... Um, well, let me just ask a question. How many people in the audience ha have, a, have trouble counting? <laughs> kind of, very ex kind of, uh... Dyslexic! Yeah. No! <laughs> Woo. Four, 67, negative 23. I am among you. I am, I am innumerate, like whatever number of you are out there. And uh, we, have the, we have the cure, though, in this first, in this first short. Um, mm -hmm. So let me ask you guys, if you're going to make a short that taught people how to count, what would you feature? Uh, uh, and, uh, who? An abacus? Who My arm is moving, waiting for an answer. An abacus. Pu puppets. S right. Music. Yes. Okay. Music. Yes. Music about what? Oh, uh, music about, about, about numbers. Count, count about an animal, right. Yes. And what kind of animal? Uh, uh, the, like the rabbits from Watership Down who could only count to five. Right, uh, turkeys. Turkeys, exactly, you turkeys. guys. Okay. Counting equals turkeys, as you'll see. Please roll one turkey, two, two turkey. turkey. We're already counting. Very solemn beginning. <laughs> Sorry, that was me. I had Chipotle before the show. <laughs> One, two, three, did, did I miss something? Should we be holding our breath? Four, five, six. The count from Sesame Street has finally gone folk. The guy who wrote the alphabet song Nine. is feeling pretty damn smug about his songwriting skills right now. <laughs> yeah. Count with us to ten. Okay, I'll try counting. Uh, one, two, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Warm him up with a little counting, then into the turkey pit. That's how you make a movie. I want to go in a turkey pit. <laughs> I'm an outcast, even among filthy turkey. <laughs> You know, if Ben Franklin had had his way, these would be our national bird. And if so, hopefully almost extinct by now. <laughs> oh God, the kazoo is filling them with rage. Their thirst for blood is unquenchable. All hope is lost. Go, go, kazoo! Turkeys in the sun. Bum, bum, bum. Turkeys having fun. Fun! Waiting for death in a cramped holding pen is fun. <laughs> Hey, don't knock it till you've tried it, Kevin. Okay. <laughs> They're fans of Peter Falk. <laughs> they make bourbon out of that guy. See, guys, so much fun. Cages that you can't even stand in are fun. 
words. Turkeys all around. Awful turkey sounds. Turkeys in the air. Well, not quite. <laughs> See their funny feet. Truly hilarious feet. I, Turkeys are a treat. Yep, gets a lot of glads crowded around here around the end of November. <laughs> okay, uh, look, if there's a better, less insane way to teach kids to count, I'd like to... Okay, maybe there is, but we're not going to bother finding out. No. You know you've made a good children's short when the exact same footage with different narration would make a disturbing animal rights film. <laughs> All these turkeys strongly endorse Charlie Brown's style of Thanksgiving dinner. You want feed? You come to me. I'd sing along, but I can't get over the fact that they're probably pooping on each other's heads. <laughs> Okay, kids, let's head over to the processing facility where the real fun begins. There's the stunner, the slasher, the head chopper, the scalder, the defeatherer, the eviscerator, the deboner, and everybody's favorite, the mechanical tissue separator. And for you kids who finish the tour, we give you a souvenir beak. Yeah. Turkeys. <laughs> This is Casey Kasem, and we're counting down America's Top Ten Turkeys. America's Top Turkey! Everybody run, John Goodman just places holiday order! Yeah! Well, back in the pioneer days, turkey stampedes took out whole villages, killed thousands. I regret molting, uh... Pit. It's a lot like Coachella, but it's a lot cleaner. A lot cleaner. <laughs> Sole takeaway from the short remains, turkeys hate kazoos. Which means they're far more intelligent than people in jug bands. <laughs> Iggy Pop! The Olsen Twins! Cher! Any show on Fox News! <laughs> Educational, but sadly it was Benny Hill's last film. They really smell They stink like hell They'll soon be dead And stuffed with bread And when they die I'll take a thigh Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Elton John yeah. Gobble. 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 And that's the end of our irritating song. Thank you, Jim Burroughs. That ditty will haunt our dreams for weeks. One turkey, two turkey. All right, turkey, shut up and get off the stage. It's the season for turkeys, you know. Valentine's Day and all. It's perfect. That's right. Yes. Give your love a Valentine's turkey. Well, our next short is um, from the 70s. And it's a, uh, well, we'll just frankly put it out there. It's copacetic. It is the most detailed film for kindergarten teachers ever made. <laughs> it is arduous, arduous and endless. And we hope you enjoy it. And you're locked into your seats. You're really Nobody's selling this, leaving. son of a bitch, Kevin. Yeah. Bolt the doors. <laughs> We wouldn't want to take on a film like this alone, oh, so God, we no. have enlisted help. Please welcome Cole Stratton and Janet Varney to the stage. Yes. Our dear friends. Hi, guys. Welcome. We spared you the turkeys. <laughs> um, Cole and Janet, for those of you who don't know, are, all, along with David, who you saw at first, the co-founders of Sketchfest. Give them a round of applause for hey, that. guys. You are here, and you are happy because of them. 
No. And please go to, uh, I'll put in a plug for you now, rifttracks.com. They have done a lot of hilarious riff tracks. Check out their body of work, if you would. They Check do their out own their riffs body and they do a wonderful job. How many years now for Sketchfest? Uh, it's our 14th year. Yeah. Somehow. Were you like three when you started this? <laughs> uh, we, I think we were all around 24, 25. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Shh. Lucky kids young and your kids. energy. I just can't keep up with you. Ah, kids the and kids your today's with their sketch fests. <laughs> yeah, legendary comedy events. <laughs> um, so, guys, you want to join us for uh, setting up a room? Well, not really, but we will. <laughs> uh, we've seen it. You guys went to kindergarten, right? Yeah. Did you realize the amount of planning it took to get you to like finger paint? I had no idea. <laughs> All right. Well, let's 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 share it with the audience. Please roll setting up a room. <laughs> On a day before the children arrive, the teacher faces the problem of planning and arranging her classroom. A nightmarish hellscape of an ordeal. <laughs> she brings to this task experience and understanding of the many needs of children. She has a degree in child needsology from Capella University. <laughs> Though each room differs, there are certain basic principles that will guide her in creating a functional, flexible environment in which the children can grow and develop. Principles like post-caution signs around the acid pit. Well, at least it's not setting up the room. Oh, hi, children. I'm your substitute teacher. Let's go out to recess. Ha, huh? come on, let's go. I mean, there's a hairy monster in the class. Go. Wistful music reminds me of the time I set up a room with my old man. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people died that day. Yeah, That's sweet. Beautiful. <laughs> hey, Mike, she put on the slipcover from your grandmother's couch. <laughs> Yeah, I could have changed shoes during the credits, but I don't value your time. Hi. Fred Armisen, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Oh, just wonderful. I hated to come back. But <laughs> hated to come back. Like Good I've start. Nice honest. tone to set there. Yes, they uh, broke through three rooms to make two kindergartens. I scared the hell out of the kids when they broke through the three time, rooms to make two rooms. kindergartens. I really do. I think so. Uh, wouldn't you like to hang up your coat? Sure. There's only one hanger, do you mind? No, that's okay. Good. <laughs> Hope you brought a smock. Oh, yes. Well, you'll need it, I'm telling you. <laughs> Gallagher is performing a private show in the library corner. <laughs> they promised to finish painting this over that's the weekend. Uh, it looks kind of rain-spotted right now, but when that's done, I think it'll look very, very good. I never thought I'd say this, but I'd okay, rather watch the Kardashians begin? right now. <laughs> what I've been thinking about. I think the first thing for us to do is to see what we have to work with. Good. Move on over here. I'm gonna micromanage the hell out of you. Do you mind? <laughs> well, that's our storage closet. The light's on the left. It's a good size, isn't it? No, it's a terrible size, you naive fool. Planning, <laughs> you take into account the location of the fixed properties of the room. AKA where all the crap is. <laughs> Children love those. Did you notice our sink? Oh, it's nice to have a sink in the room. Yeah. <laughs> That's our bathroom. And bathroom verification complete, Roger. Here's an easel. Not the newest. No. I hope we have another one. I like to set up for four children to paint at one time. Here's a metal mirror. These are two oh, aliens nice. trying to act human, right? The equipment. <laughs> includes your planning and the extent to which you can develop each area. Man, this narrator can't believe he turned down judging that reptile show to do this gig. Drawer. Yeah, that's bedroom. Oh, ironing board. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> I think I think we all feel that way about ironing board. Good housekeeping area. I think this must have been their reading corner last year. Well, if that was meant for the reading area, we're going to have to give it a lot more space. Her disgust at the currently allotted reading area fills her mouth with bile. 
places where they kept their blocks. Okay, who used to be in this room is why is nobody concerned that they all suddenly vanished? <laughs> you think you'll keep them here? I really don't know. We may have to. Oh, God, my hands are tied. I'm so weak. Damn this room and what it's doing to us. How about that cubby in the corner? I wonder if that's movable. I'll check. I'll check, sir. As you survey the room, possibilities for the best use of working space and the placement of the different areas become apparent. We can use that corner probably for some activity. Oh, let's not get too specific here. Active <laughs> play and quiet play. I think if we keep the yes. active area on this side yes. and the quiet area on that side yes. of the room, it'll work out all right. Yes, so keep them separate by putting them in we'll separate areas. Hi, right, Joe, I think she's got it. Holy it shit. And that would give us more space for block play. Right. Why don't we sit down and rough out a plan? Fine. That way we'll know what we're working toward. It was vital that we put on these smocks to slowly shuffle around the room. Let's <laughs> start okay. by sketching in the fixed unit. Now this is where the Oh thing dear is. God, they're not gonna... Yeah. They're not gonna really show them drawing an entire okay. floor plan, are they? Just get into the madness, Mike. Get into the madness. <laughs> Embrace it. Here. And then a black corner here, a black corner here. It'll all be black corners. <laughs> She's a, snapped her tether. Now, let's see. Uh, yes? The cubbies. The cubbies! Yes, you glorious, insane bitch! It's just using up so much valuable wall space. I'm sorry, that was out of line. <laughs> It's least confusing for the children going in and out when they're near the door. So no more outbursts from you, huh, Missy? Housekeeping <laughs> <laughs> will be here. Okay, overthinking it a little bit here. <laughs> the USS Nimitz had less complicated blueprints. A blocked area here. This is isolated, and now the flow of traffic. Traffic for the so kids to play in, right? Yeah, oh, sure. It uh, helps them develop character and stuff. Children wanted to. Now that means we can move the library from here to over there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Who the hell made you the president of kindergarten? This is the quiet, <laughs> and as far away as possible from the noisy activity. The kids can smear their boogers and their pants in peace over here. <laughs> what about the woodworking bench? Kids can build furniture. We sell it out of the back of a truck. I think this is going to turn a profit on this rinky in the operation because somehow. Yes. <sighs> this is longer than Interstellar. Uh, it belongs with all the other noisy activities. Okay? All right, and all right, all right. isolated there. And we can supervise it more carefully. The space behind the movable cubbies looks like a good place to hang the tool board. Oh, that's our gallery of sort of attractive but really dumb guys. <laughs> tool, board. tool board. Tool board, everybody. You there. <laughs> Could you stop breathing so loud as I draw? <laughs> Apologize, sir. Good. We haven't talked about where we put the record player yet. Oh, for what the hell have we been doing? <laughs> <all morning? laughs> Having the record player here won't interfere with the reading because music is usually a group activity. She's just punting now because it's almost lunch. <laughs> we'll leave that where the teacher had it. The light is very good, and also it's very near the water. Oh, great! That little right. Monet brat will be so happy. Both easels in without blocking up the bathroom door. Well, we have plenty of space here. Right. So shut up is my point. Always going on about bathroom access. Jeez. It's out of the floor of traffic. We just have to make sure that the bathroom door can open. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know, because certain people need a clear path for suddenly sprinting to the bathroom. But certain people. This way. That's right. Right. I think that'll be all right. Right. Now, now what about clay? Clay? And what about arc welding and glass blowing? Well, if we don't have space for a table, the area should be down here near the... Um, don't say bathroom. ...in the water. Oh, but you... We do not have a the space for it, we'll move a table in for clay and finger painting. But the bathroom access! And we want to do those activities. 
We can wait and see, though. We may have space here. But let's sketch the Fine, table. if you want you children want. tripping over tables on their way to the bathroom and filling my pants, their pants! <laughs> I need bathroom. Now then, we still have to find a place for the table game. Blackjack, Texas Hold'em, Pie Gal. <laughs> This size, we still have a problem finding the right place. Yeah, just invade the first graders. Yeah. Come on. I wonder. <laughs> I know. Let's put it in front of the housekeeping area. AKA pile of garbage. Some of the sheds <laughs> to make a divider. That way, the games can be stored on this side, and the children can use the tops for storage of housekeeping things. Kindergarten, over 90% storage problem solving. <laughs> And, and over here, we'll have a, a storage for our storage containers. <laughs> Let's put the table out here and see how this works. Mm -hmm. Where are they going to put the throw-up sawdust? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, things are about to get sexy. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, our easel in the library unit. I'm so excited I can scream. <laughs> and if you block the bathroom in any way, I swear to God, I will cut you. We have a few other things for you. We have a few other things for you. Let's see what we have. Good work. Good work. Thank you. Good work. Housekeeping. LARPing. Painting. Hot yoga. Games. Clay. Water. Finger painting. Snake handling. Music and reading. And that leaves a nice, big, open space for the children to move about in. When we decide to unchain them. Now, let's see how our plan works. Their plan was a disaster! <laughs> We'll find out why in part two of, of setting, setting Up, up a, a Room. Thank you, Cole, Stratton, and Janet Barty. We love you. We'll Thank see you, you later. Janet. When we bring this son of a bitch home. <laughs> Whew, that is wow, some... that was a roller coaster ride. Oh. I am exhausted. I'm drained already. I need yeah. a minute here. It's half yeah. over. I oh, mean, man. All right. Unbelievable. <laughs> The, the, uh, the next short goes all the way back to the 1950s. So it was before color was invented. Mm -hmm. um, this is, we, I just noticed something as we were doing this this morning. All of our shorts are from the 50s or the 70s. You guys have any theories? Everybody I, just... We hate the 60s. <laughs> I don't and know, the 80s. Tripping on Hyde Ashbury for all those years. I don't know. I don't think that the 60s existed. I have a time compression theory that I'm going to go into at length. Stay after. It's yeah. about two hours long. <laughs> Symposium to follow with Mike Nelson. Missing time theory. My <laughs> guest host, John Delancey, will come up and talk to you about that. Um, anyway, this is about uh, how to write better emails in the 50s. It's called... Uh, letters. Writing, letters. Setting up a room is what... No! no, <laughs> no and, uh, okay, to help us out with this is, a, uh, besides being a terrific stand-up comedian, uh, you can check out his video of his crowd work tour. Uh, you hear his voice on tons of different animation, Aqua Teen, Hunger Force, Space Ghost, Squid Billies. You've seen him on Board to Death, Flight of the Concords, and I am terribly jealous that he had a part in Pootie Tang. <laughs> Please welcome Todd Barry. Todd Barry! Oh, Hi, Todd. Thank you. Thank you. Todd, thank you so much for joining us. I have a question for you. You're, you're a busy man. Uh-huh. You work a lot, but I imagine about 80% of your time is writing social letters, right? Yeah, I, I had never heard the term social letters. So. <laughs> I don't think it existed even when they made this. It's a myth. I tend to believe you. Um, are you somebody who will, like, write thank you notes back? Do you, uh, get, do you get any gifts? Let's start there. Do I get gifts? <laughs> Not mean receive not. gifts? <laughs> yes. Am I bombing? No, 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 we are, we are, believe it. No, it's us, definitely. Well, yeah, I'm a lavish uh, gift giver and, a, and I write scented thank you notes. <laughs> what are some of your favorite scents, Todd? Uh, I think lavender's a safe bet. Oh, yeah. Lavender. It's always it's relaxing. I prefer ham, personally. <laughs> oh, man, our first walkouts, come on. <laughs> it's it's my first time doing the show, give me Good a break. Night. Lavender, you sons of bitches. 
My mother was killed by lavender, you mother. That is the worst way to send a letter. Look, he's doing the double flip off to us now. Patchouli loving son of a bitch. All right. Go on with you. All right, well, let's learn how to write better social letters, let's shall we? Learn what the hell they are first and then learn how to do it yes. together. Let's roll writing better social letters. Writing better social letters, part of Coronets, for God's sake, think of better goals, series. Ah, Dr. Ruth, maybe she'll talk about sex in a frank way that makes you never want to have sex ever again. Hmm, I must be able to look more like a 50-year-old woman, but how? Ah, uh, crying into grandma's ashes always cheers me up. You know, guys, in the mid-20th century, conversation was considered disturbingly socialist. <laughs> well, the penthouse forum editorial department is stodgier than I imagined. Are you through already? Sure, sis. It's a threatening note to a congressman, not war and peace. Come on. Well, and I want to write the cousins Jimmy and Alice and thank them, too. I don't know how you do it, Wally. You make it seem so easy. Well, being literate is Here, a good first step, sis. Just didn't do any good. Why not? You read me some of those letters. I think they were pretty sharp. But there's a difference between reading letters and writing them. Walter, how do you write such good social letters? Well, my hideous pleated pants with the side chain well, helps no, a lot. <laughs> side chain. Some people have it and some don't. That's not true, Walter Barlow. And you're going to sit down right now and tell me the secret. Well, all right. But fair warning, it involves a blood oath ritual. What are you doing? Well, I've just never seen so many racial slurs before. Yeah, I just... Neat. Into all kinds of things. There are letters of invitations. And some of them are formal ones. If the words Chuck E. Cheese are on it, it's generally formal. You know, I'm seem to have one here, but I got one in the mail just today. Let's see. Dear sir, you're hereby invited to our annual adult baby diaper lover charity ball. Black tie diaper required? Wow. Yes. Is a ball for Washington's birthday? Isn't he dead? I, yeah. You'll notice it's written in the third person. And down here, they note formal. Mm. Well, I'll write a formal answer that starts out like this. Dear George, go fuck yourself and your gross wooden teeth. Take it to George Washington. You know, it's only when the party's formal that the invitation is written in the third person. Now, take an informal invitation like this one. The Washington Ball and April Fool's Party are just lead-ups to the annual Arbor Day orgy. Ooh, yeah. You don't have to write an answer to this kind of invitation. Chances are you're phone to accept this one. Yeah, I'd rather die. Thank you. <laughs> Giving invitations, accepting invitations, sending regrets that you can't be present. Accusing Nicole Kidman of monitoring your thoughts. With another purpose. These are letters of thanks. Uh, tell me, Nora, which of these did you really enjoy the most? Anyone that doesn't say BYOB. This must be Alice made me feel good. I could tell just by reading it that she really liked the present I sent her. Here, listen to this. Please Thanks send me the receipt. Me the book for my How did you know I've been trying to borrow that very book for a week? Yeah, I tried to borrow a book, but this I haven't seen the short book. How to Borrow a well, Book. Right, but these are both thank you letters. Now, um, these letters have still another purpose. They're friendly letters. Letters that give news or keep up a friendship. Let's see. The puppy has cancer. Okay, let's find another one. I was shopping yesterday, and I picked out the smartest blouse. But then... Oh, wait, this is my diary. You know, as you read that, you just hear Martha's voice. Just as if she were telling you. Uh, let's see. Oh, I was shopping yesterday. And I picked out the smartest blouse. Margaret grew up to be Tim Gunn. I couldn't find my change purse. I was so embarrassed and frightened, too. Yes, well, blouse shopping I is a spine-chilling ordeal. <laughs> oh, what an experience. No blouse. Get off my couch, Margaret. 
pretty good example of the sort of thing that makes a letter a lot of fun. And then there's another type of social letter. It's the letter of sympathy. A good excuse to use my rainbow bright here, stationery. But I got a lot of them when I had pneumonia. They were all informal and very <laughs> friendly. And they certainly made me feel better. You were hallucinating. Those were paper <laughs> towels. <laughs> Different letters for different purposes, and I think I know the purpose of mine. It's a thank you letter for a visit. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, that's what I tried to write, but it's not very good. Pornographic centaur cartoons? <laughs> what the heck, sis? On local papers and torn out, written in pencil. Might as well use dog you know shit. <laughs> you better check that spelling too. Please, please. She has a future bothering okay. people with petitions outside bonds. <laughs> Dear Uncle Ross and Aunt Helen. Go I fuck you yourselves and your gross wooden <laughs> teeth. <laughs> Washington <laughs> wannabes. Can you imagine what they think if they read such a letter? My God, you are made of failure. <laughs> ah, the letter's haunted! <laughs> Ross, I do hope Nora really enjoyed her visit here. Oh, I hope so. Pretty hard to tell from our letter. Well, uh, time to edit my will. <laughs> well, what do you want Aunt Helen and Uncle Ross to think? I mean, how do you want them to feel after they read your letter? Well, I wanted them to feel gassy well, and bloated. I want them to feel pleased. After all, that's the whole purpose in writing the letter. To make them glad that they invited me. Why don't you try again now? But leave out the part about Hitler having some good right. ideas. <laughs> But it's much more thoughtful to cut the letters out of magazine ads, tie the note to a rock, and throw through their window. Now try to imagine what you want your letter to look like. Look at the page. See what should go on it. Uh, lizard people manifesto, First, maybe? you want your address and the date, of course. Just paste two band-aids there instead. <laughs> then the salutation. And the main part of the letter. The main part. Yep, that's the technical term, sis. <laughs> and finally, the complimentary close and your signature. Or in your case, a big dumb X. <laughs> you want even margins. And you want the page well aligned. So invent software that does that now, you for got you. The idea. I think so. First, my address and the date. Oh, God, Fred. Oh, God, fire everywhere. How are you so bad at this? And then salutation. Dear Aunt Helen and Uncle Ross. He's holding a gun just How's out of frame. <laughs> Seems like a good start. Now, uh, what are you going to say? Maybe something about how I look cool sitting backward in a chair? And I want to say it in a way that will please Aunt Helen and Uncle Ross. Okay, so heavy on the anti-Semitism. was what you're there? In person. Now, let's see. I guess I'd say... You're complete you trash, and your meatloaf you gives me diarrhea. I don't have enough marvelous time. Sorry, Mike. I'm just... Well, that doesn't sound much like a letter. Maybe it's not supposed to. Maybe it should sound like you. Well, like you doing exactly I what I part? tell you. Well, why not? I'll use scratch paper until I'm sure just what I'm going to say. Writing in a thank you note should take Please. 10 to 12 oh, hours, you guys. The time you let us ride the horses. Wasn't it fun? But, but how will I say it? Um, Hitler had some good ideas? Well, stop doing that! <laughs> Darn. I'll never forget riding the horses. My, it was exciting and so much fun. Why, this is going to be easy. I'll have a letter done in no time. And I'll start on the letter to Jimmy and Alice. Jimmy Hendrix and Alice Cooper. Gonna suggest they try rock and roll. <laughs> there. I think that's a good thing to know. Do you want to hear it? All right. Just a minute. And he silently rips it to shreds without breaking eye contact. <laughs> it certainly looks neat. Hey, that's good. Way to use your lady and brain, you little lady. Why don't you try to imagine how Aunt Helen and Uncle Ross will react to the letter? All right. Dear Aunt Helen and Uncle Ross. All work and no play makes Jack a dull Thank boy. You. All work and no play makes Jack a I always have a wonderful time at your house, and so does Walter. You did so many lovely things for us. Look to you, the power bill came. <laughs> My, it was exciting. So much fun. But most of all, I think I enjoyed just being at your house and being your gift. And wrecking so your I John. Sorry. I... 
Stop the thing. No. You know, Nora, that's not bad at all. With a little practice, you'll be a wizard writing letters. Then you could write them for an important man as your job. I know. Some people are formal. Some are. I'm glad you appreciated my help. Here you go. You're writing a letter to Jimmy and Alan. Can it be from both of them? Gee, I... Well, there are lots of things I'd like to say to them. I'd like to tell them... Was he about letters, writing letters, and the letter-writing lifestyle? (laughs) All right. You might as well write it together. Here, you can write some now. Oh, good. His long con finally comes to fruition. (laughs) (laughs) Now the Twilight Zone twist. They've been in a nuclear bunker the whole time. Earth's only survivors. (laughs) Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Todd Barry. Thank you, Todd. It's a pleasure having you up here. Todd Berry, ladies and gentlemen. Todd, I expect a lot more social letters from you now, and a lot better ones. We'll write you a letter, Todd, uh, asking you to write us a letter. (laughs) Todd has a bunch of shows coming up uh, at Sketchfest, so if you haven't caught a stand-up act, please do. He is amazingly funny. Please. Check him out. Uh, our next short, we are going to stay in the 50s, because we love the 50s yes. so yeah. much. I'm and not the, a fan of color. No, right. I like gray. Gray shit. More gray. Uh, and uh, we are going to find out that the 50s were indeed a dangerous time. Isn't that right? That's oh, right. It's so dangerous that we're doing this without a guest. We don't want to subject anybody to the, the perils of uh, the colored world. <laughs> so if you brought your flak jacket or your it armor, came out please awful. put it on now. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's right. If you have your Iron Patriot costume, put it on now. Please roll, live, and learn. Ah, yeah. Live and learn. That's what I said after I spent three months and still couldn't train my dog to make me a damn sandwich. Sure, sure. Okay. Three months. Okay, well, I guess I just have to take another leave of absence from Rift Tracks and try it again for another three months. You haven't learned anything. Oh, wait, is that what live and learn means? Yes, it is. <laughs> live and learn, I suppose. The live and learn sketch. Thank you. <laughs> oh, don't applaud. Whose enthusiastic cooperation made this picture possible? Technical advisor on live and learn. <laughs> Wait till the other PhDs hear about this. In your face, you not advising sons of bitches. Children come and go in this hospital every day. And that's just the step. The following scenes show some of the most common accidents that happen to kids. Because they did first and thought last, they ended up in an ambulance like the one here. And here are some facts not very many people know. I am the More baby god. Bow down before me. Students in their home or neighborhood than all the diseases like polio, TB, Ladies and Ladies, down here. Tell hey. that to your mom hey, and dad tits. tonight. They'll really be surprised. For instance, we know that every boy and girl should know how to swim. So learn how to swim, oh, you gutless waste of space. That girl space. wants to have some fun. Looks like she's telling her friend to jump on Johnny when he comes up from his dive. (laughs) Luckily, her friend is a mindless thug, easily bribed by a tootsie roll. That's what she's going to do, all right. That's a good trick. Trick. It worked out just like she planned. Good trick. Trick. Wait a minute. Something's wrong with Johnny. Of course, tricks don't always turn out as we think they will. Yeah, it's like that trick I pulled when I stabbed my brother-in-law. <laughs> That's a great trick. Trickster! Wow, what a great trick, huh? Had they waited until they got to the hospital to do it, like this poor boy, it would have been too late. The trick almost had an unhappy ending. Oh, good trick. What a trick. Another bad thing to fool around with is fire, as you all know. A campfire can be a lot of fun. But it can also be very dangerous. Uh, I heard campfires can be a lot of fun, something, something, something. something. That's what I got. That's exactly what I got. (laughs) Yep, same. But Bill just isn't thinking about danger. Come on, Bill. I'm sorry. It sure makes you mad when you try and try and still can't get a blaze started. And when the cops ask you why you're setting fire to your own failing restaurant. (laughs) Ah, it seems that David here has a good idea. Hang on. Let's uh, get Nicolas Cage and strap him to our fire. Probably some more matches. Although if he hasn't started it by now, mm-mm. if that's gas in that can, he's going to be awfully sorry. And if that's not gas, they really sucked at can labeling back then. <laughs> Maybe one of his pals will stop him from throwing that gas on the fire. 
No, no one said a word. They're too busy concentrating on the fire to think about what might happen. Here, whatever's in this can of whatever might help. And so, it doesn't always you know what? gasoline to make He fire turned fire. into a Mexican luchador. What could be cooler? Fire. With carelessness, fires will burn you. <laughs> Here's another cause for accidents happening while you're playing. For instance, this looks simple, doesn't it? What, surviving in a post-apocalyptic rural <laughs> landscape? No, it doesn't. And it was. Until one of the boys decided to jump. Little Davy Lee Whoops, Roth. There, there he goes. goes. He still seems to be in one piece. He said it was easy. Nothing to it. Tells his friend to jump. Calls his friend a nutless little coward. But this boy isn't so sure. Come on, Mike, don't be afraid. Jump. It's not high. My fever barely so broke through Mike, the skin. Not wanting to appear afraid, takes a deep breath and jumps. And yes, the kid we forced to play, the, the kid who way. broke his leg, actually his broke his leg. Very sorry. It's the but 50s. Sorry, oh, won't mend a broken leg. It hurts so much. I need all of your lunch money for a year. Ow! Oh, give me your skateboard. Oh! So the hospital gets another patient. Jumping from high places isn't smart. And pushing somebody when he doesn't expect it can be very dangerous. Uh, doctor, that's Walking actually on my arm fences, you're setting. Climbing around old buildings may be fun, <laughs> but it can also put boys and girls in the hospital. And that isn't so much fun. We need something to help dry this plaster. Nurse, grab that can of gasoline. <laughs> Here's something else to look out for. Playing in the streets. Ball games are fun. But they should also be safe. I heard ball games That's in the street are fun. And something, something, yeah. something. Yeah. Precisely what I got. If he keeps his eye on the ball, he can't look out for traffic, too. The guy in the car is yelling, I got it, mate! The car's break. Prevented an accident. I'm just pretending because I lost us the game. The ambulance brings in the victim of an accident that never should have happened. Now let's see a totally justified accident, what we're glad happened. Bob and Ed went canoeing at the lake one afternoon. This being L.A., the lake is actually pooled bum urine. <laughs> it was a lovely day. <laughs> Peaceful and quiet. Perfect for boating. Not quite as great for surfing, but if you want to try, <laughs> knock yourself out. Thanks, narrator. <laughs> Too quiet for Ed, I guess. Because all of a sudden, he shouted to Bob to look at something on the shore. Look, a thing that's not gray! Bob did something no one should ever do. Stand Poop in a up boat? in a canoe. Oh, that, right. This gave Ed a chance to have a good point, the canoe and scare poor Bob. But once again, what started out as an innocent joke ended up in something more serious. It ended up in romance. <laughs> it's a good thing Ed remembered what he'd learned in the Boy Scouts. Yeah, I have a pillow. And threw Bob a safety seat in time to prevent a drowning. Oh, this is going to end well. Oh, God. Guns caused some of the worst accidents and the most tragic. Blindness. Blindness from getting Such shot in the ass. Not only illegal for boys in most cities, but is a possible killer and crippler in their hands. Cold, dead hands or otherwise. Yes. He's a good shot, but look what happened. Oh, Ralphie's mom laughs maniacally. <laughs> It's very easy to put out an eye with a BB gun or with pieces of flying glass, as happened in this case. And the NRA puts out a press release blaming glass. <laughs> Is it worth this, boys and girls? Well, maybe a pirate-style eye patch. That'd be great. <laughs> Just getting a half look at the world. Not how vision actually works. Don't <laughs> Now take the case of this young lady, cutting out paper dolls in the safety of her own home. Suddenly a paper cut blinds her. Doesn't seem possible an accident could happen here, does it? You don't know what we're capable of, do you? When she heard her father at the door, she got excited. She'd just have time to hide behind the door and surprise him. 
Like she did every night. She jumped to her feet. Red rum! This time it was different. She tripped and fell. Yes! And Just the as we has another patch-up job to do. It's always dangerous to run with scissors or any other sharp, pointed object in the hand. Next time, throw your scissors and then to run to them safely. While holding scissors. If you fell, you could cut yourself or poke out an eye. <laughs> there must have been eyeballs dangling out of their sockets everywhere back then. <laughs> Sure, walking seems harmless, but one tiny crack in the sidewalk can put out an eye. <laughs> For God's sake, don't run ever! Are you mad? Now, how could anything possibly happen to these boys? Okay, now you're just getting smug, you sadistic <laughs> bastard. Yeah. Let's go out to the edge of the cliff. Let's go shoot BB guns at canoes. No better. But Nick feels like exploring. He doesn't stop to think that the fence was put up for a reason. Come on and look at all the dead bodies at the bottom. No, Nick doesn't stop to think until it's too late. And he ruins a perfectly good mannequin. What fences were for the hard way. And he's not out of trouble yet. And here comes a flaming car full of scissors. <laughs> but lucky for Nick, he is not alone. The others shower Nick with One fist of his size rocks. For help. <laughs> ah, kids. And comes back with the best friend a kid could have when trouble occurs. A lawyer. A policeman. Oh, okay, yeah. The officer goes into action fast. He calls the rescue squad and drives to the bottom of the ravine. He, he, he calls for backup, right? Yeah, he certainly doesn't do anything idiotic, like tie a flimsy knot in an old rope and, and think that he's acting. No, he would never oh, do that. Oh, God, he's, he's really... Oh, God, no. <laughs> there he goes. And Whoops. The job ah! of that... That's another thing to remember, boys and girls. Whenever you get into real trouble, go to your nearest police officer or sheriff. You'll find him a real friend in need. Sure, he may have utterly stupid ideas on how to help you, but he's a friend indeed. <laughs> Cut him some slack. <laughs> Idiot. Um, officer, you know I fell into somebody's backyard. I'm right? here to rescue you, young but there's, man. there's a road about 20 feet no away. No need to thank me, just me. doing my job. Make sure he's not hurt any place but his wrist. Wait, wait, what? This is insane, Mr. Policeman. Just hang tight, son. This is not Death Valley at Santa Monica. <laughs> he's learned his lesson and was lucky not to have been hurt more than he was. Well, give him a few more minutes yeah. here. <laughs> They're doomed. <laughs> You youngsters can save yourselves a lot of pain if you just stop and think. You more. Listen to the advice of your parents and teachers. A hospital bed isn't anywhere near as nice as your bed at home. It probably smells better. A bone that is broken in too many places may keep you from ever playing ball again. But I'm a cellist. Maybe figures don't mean much to you, but listen. Try to understand. Get this through your it's thick your monkey life skulls. I'm talking about. More than 12,500 kids die every year. We can do better. More than 50,000 of them are permanently crippled every year. More than 1,500,000 children are seriously injured every year. And all of these accidents happen in your own home. That's right, your, your home. <laughs> you are killing so and injuring careful, millions kids. of children. Too many youngsters end up in the hospital. Why don't you stay out of it? Live Mind your own learn, business. Because you are the America of tomorrow. Every one of your stupid injuries is a love letter to Stalin himself. So go outside and have fun. Wow. This audience loves severely maimed children. You sick sons of bitches. Uh, I just need a, something really quick. Could somebody run some scissors down here, please? Just anyway. Yeah, it's crazy. really fast, really fast. Anybody bring some gasoline? If Adam Savage was here, I'm sure he'd have plenty of gasoline on hand. Wow. Ooh. All right. That's hard to look at. Well, we're going to zip ahead now uh, back to the 70s, that time of hope and promise. Just and ping-ponging back and forth between those two decades. A time of hope and love and promise and hideous, appalling hair. 
That's what I'll remember. And joining us now, our good friend, uh, you know him from The Daily Show, you know him, of course, from the Judge John Hodgman Show. And I think I've just given a clue to his name. Please welcome Mr. John Hodgman to the stage. Hello, John. Oh, God. John. John. Oh, he fell on our scissors. Why did we keep them there? Why? Why did you attempt to do anything? You're on fire. How did that happen? Oh. The late John Hodgman, ladies and gentlemen. Quickly reanimated, came back, because he's real showbiz. I have a compound fracture in my arm, but I'll do the show. Thank, Thank you, John. <laughs> I didn't part. like... That one was scary. I didn't like that one. Can we see the, the one with the kindergarten room again, please? <laughs> I really en- you will get what you asked for. <laughs> I really enjoyed that. I love organization and, and ladies. <laughs> I'm, tr- I'm trying to figure out how I can be both of those ladies for Halloween. <laughs> it's kind of cliche, though, don't you think? I believe, I believe Adam Savage already made that costume for himself. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't like it when those boys came into the room. They, they were bad boys. <laughs> yes, when they that, were naughty, naughty boys. When they? that kid said, we have some other things for you, he really thought he was in a porno, right? <laughs> like, that actor was like... Well, this, this is going to happen, isn't it? <laughs> there was severe disappointment on his face. <laughs> you, are, you are setting up my room right now, aren't you? <laughs> he did have that Italian stallion look on his face there, didn't he? Yeah, I didn't, like I, didn't yeah. like... I wanted to see the pretty one and the older one. <laughs> you're, you're a sick man, John Hodgman. Uh, I think the, young, the younger teacher was pretty hot. Really We've talked about this, believe me. Yeah, I... <laughs> There's plenty more of her, guys. And the old, and the I old, love watching her bossed around by the older one. I, I, it's a really sexy movie. <laughs> John. I'm getting nauseous over John, here. John, John, please. I'm really getting nauseous Let's now. back the hell away from this. Before, well, we still have time. Well, we'll talk later, man, okay? Can I just get I a... Think, I think we just bonded. Do you have a copy that you can give me? I, uh, I actually run a setting up a room forum, John, so please, <laughs> please talk to me about that. Are you one of those setties? Setter. Ah. Yeah. I'm a setter. <laughs> Mike's a setter. All right. Yeah. We don't have that lady for you quite yet, but we do have a very attractive gentleman uh, in this next short. <laughs> yes. Um, Fair, oh, man. Red hot. Yeah, uh, please roll Making Sense with Sentences with John Hodgman. That is the full title. Crowd favorite, apparently. Yeah. Making Sense with Sentences. Oh, shit. We got troubadours. <laughs> just like the rappers say, you can't turn a hoe into a housewife, you can't make sense with sentences. I'm not so sure about the second part of that there. There there are a lot of rappers, I bet one of them said that at some point. (laughs) Oh my. Somewhere little known to the rest of the world is the island of Grameria. Birthplace of math. A peaceful and entirely normal place. Except for a few notions and laws, which might seem peculiar to outsiders. And each year we shall make the fattest gopher we can find our king. We shall use Funyuns for currency. (laughs) Background monkey, how's it going? Wait, what? Wait! (laughs) What the hell? Rat. Just a minute. Now, just what can that be? Maybe community theater demanding your return to the stage? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hello. My name's Joy Marshall, and I'm here to learn about sentences and take my place as a full-fledged grammarian. Well, it's about time. Let's get started. And you can call me Mr. Smith. Remember that. Mr. Smith, definitely my real name. If any cops come asking questions, I'm Mr. Smith. In Samaria, Joey, the laws of grammar are the laws of the land. And by the land, you mean that magic marker drawing outside, right? (laughs) Positively, perfectly understandable. And never, never may a modifier be misplaced. And you alliteration is mandatory. Laws, <laughs> I hope I implied that strongly enough. As a grammarian of the first 
order. You'll be rolling in trim, now, Jimmy. Jerry, the answer to these three questions will help to give you some... Grammaria's other name is Awful Puffy Shirtestad. <laughs> how is a sentence like a horse and carriage? Uh, it isn't. How is a sentence like finding a treasure? Uh, in no way. And how is a sentence like listening to music? Please refer to my previous Smith, answers. I don't understand any of those questions at all. They'll make sense as you learn the answers. Let's start with the first one. How is a sentence like a horse and carriage? I don't know. Why do I look like a middle-aged lesbian doing little Dutch boy You'll have to pretend that this is a real carriage <laughs> and that my friend here is a real horse. And not a guinea pig waiting now, patiently for death. Horse. Definitely a horse. <laughs> How do they go together? Like love and marriage. Come on, boy, we're learning about sentences. We're not they just setting up a room here, like this is subject. serious. The, verb. the carriage is the subject, and the verb is the horse here. Of it course, horse is actually a noun. Look, it's a guinea pig dog. horse noun verb. And That's you all. Your horse and carriage, you can add passengers. Just keep like smiling and pretend one. you don't see the monkey humping but the guinea pig in the corner. Your sentence has both parts. Without the horse, the carriage doesn't go anywhere. Much and like Mr. Sam carriage, Smith ever since no his house arrest. The horse going. Same with subject and verb. Stop ignoring the monkey! Mo <laughs> Put them together, <laughs> and you've got a sentence. Just look at it go! Tell me, my boy, how is a sentence like a horse and carriage? Subject and or a plus-size blouse on a no, small boy! Really, your thinking is right, but that's not a whole sentence. If you're going to talk about subjects and verbs, the least you can do is, is to have some one fucking respect. Go to the blackboard and make a whole sentence out of your answer. There's a monkey back there doing monkey stuff, and we're missing all of it. Subject and verb. Uh, of Mary is and doomed. This child is an idiot. <laughs> together, <laughs> by Hey, free me, kid. When nobody else is here, the sentence myth puts on a matching harness and oh, oh God, please help. There's the subject. Wait, he underlined subject and verb. Uh, both words together form the subject, just like a horse and carriage. Now we're making sense. We're sentences. sentences. like finding a treasure. I just happen to have a treasure map here. Let's try an experiment. Mr. Sentence Smith, why did you just tape a big red X to your pants? <laughs> Stop. Look, here are the instructions on how to find the treasure. Let's go look. All right. Uh, this kid really blew his Make-A-Wish Foundation request. <laughs> and I'll read you the instructions, and you follow them, and you can put the marker where you end up. Then and when you're done doing that, parents, make me lunch and then open my mail. It's a fun game. And see what happens. Start from the door, take ten paces forward. Dude, the shack is like ten feet by ten feet. If there was a treasure, we would have seen it by now. Turn around three and one half times. What? Yeah, maybe spend less time designing treasure maps Back and focus on furnishing your pieces. hovel. Go right, six. Go right, continue to ignore the monkey. Sorry, <laughs> Good. Set the marker. And now we'll do it backwards. Oh, what? please, please never say that again. Six paces. Back up four paces. What? Turn around but, three but and The one red dot, time. the monkey's on the it's map. The red dot. ten paces forward. What the hell? It's not the same place. <laughs> no. But all the instructions were the same. Does that tell you anything? About your bleak future as a pirate? <laughs> the order of instructions makes a difference. No one has ever believed otherwise. Right. The order of words and ideas in a sentence affects the sense of a sentence. You see, Joey, in a sentence, the treasure you want people to get is your meaning. And yeah, for treasure is very disappointing, Joey. Just like your life. Order. Well, did you find any treasure? No. Hey! The guinea pig peed here, which is much it more interesting. Like the treasure found you. Now, can you tell me the answer to the second question? 
Um, on this night, we have to eat bitter herbs. You can find the meaning in a treasure or a sentence only when the words are in order. There's truth in that, boy, but you aren't practicing what you preach. Here, look. Here, look, there's a monkey right behind me is the only acceptable way to finish that sentence. Fine, except that your ideas are out of place. You'll show me you know what you're talking about. That monkey about is just back there texting his agent furiously. <laughs> Find the meaning in a treasure or a sentence only when the words are in order. What if we shrunk these word tiles and magnetized them for fridges? It would never sell, Joey. Now focus on the horse and carriage. Uh, order, treasure, meaning only when you find sentence words are in the can. And then I got a bunch of articles left over. I don't see how adding the word flatulence helps in any way, Joey. <laughs> no, wrong again. Don't. Find a treasure is a meaning in a sentence only when the words are in the right order. Very good. <laughs> now let's practice our talky walk. Talky now walk. for the last question. How is a sentence like listening to music? Well, listening to Dave Matthews is like being sentenced to death. Come here, Joey. Let's yeah. listen to some music and see if you can work out the answer. In the meantime, I'll keep hollering at you. <laughs> Forgot to feed my monitor, lizard. Thank you. I hoped you'd say that. On behalf of Pitchfork.com, you're hired. <laughs> well, Joey, any ideas? No, not yet. I have an idea to make me find age-appropriate we'll friends. listening to them one at a time. <laughs> Young David Brenner is enchanted. Oh. Okay, I'm ready to die now. <laughs> okay, now this one's a little more crunk. <laughs> Turn down for what? Turn down for what? Oh! Uh -huh. Awful. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Joey is the more macho version of Michael Sarah. <laughs> Whoa, got a bit nuts there. Better cool it down. I'm not sure I get it. Maybe do it with 11 more music boxes? <laughs> okay, let's move on over to the calliope. Oh, no! That sounded much better. I should say so. Through my gross, well, worm-like lips. How is this sentence like listening <laughs> to music? <laughs> I know. Things sound better when you do them one at a time. So never say right. two sentences simultaneously. Okay, I got it. Good, Good note. I think I can handle that. A thought like a song deserves to be heard by itself. So it should have a sentence of its own. Mm -hmm. Now, Joey, what's the answer to the third question? Um, get grosser, that even more worm-like like lips? Music, because a lot of songs played at once sounds bad. And sentences should only have one main idea. Joey, Joey, Joey. And Jan How Brady files a lawsuit. Not remember to put it to work. Back to the board for you. The water board. I hoped it wouldn't come to this. <laughs> oh, I'll just erase my guinea pig lover's manifesto here. <laughs> oh, I wrote more than I thought. I'll just keep erasing. <laughs> Now put those ideas into separate Oops, sentences. the eraser hit the monkey. It turned it into a hilarious take to the camera, but we didn't get to see any of it. No oh, monkey. And a verb. Different yeah. songs. Uh, yeah, I see what you're doing. No, nope. One. Wrong. Don't. Oh, God, kid. Make. Why do I bother? Sense. I could have been a dancer or a CPA or something. No. Had to be the sentence smith. FML in my gross worm-like lips. Sentence. <laughs> don't. Make. Sense. Period. 
That's it. That is the only possible way to communicate those ideas. Science. Hold, hold. Ah, zoom out, zoom out. Too close. Very good, but let me show you an exception to the rule. Did you ever see elephants walking together, Joey? I've summoned all the powers of darkness to bring my plush toy collection to life. That's nice, but I just came here to learn about... Bow down before my magic toys, Joey. Worship them. I know what I do. I think this is an homage to the Alice and Williams scene in Girls. <laughs> That's neat, but what do elephants have to do with sex? I said bow down. You can connect sentences together just like elephants using connective words instead of trunks and tails. And a snake can be used as a participle. <laughs> That's right. If the ideas in two or three different sentences are related, like elephants, you can use connective words to link them together. Like elephants. Over here are all the yeah, words you sure. can use to tie a sentence together. Oh, all I got left are consequently and thus. And fresh out Look them over, Joey. And now remember, I'm charging you for all of this. Ideas deserve separate, complete sentences, but related ideas can be tied together in one sentence using connective words. So, ta-da, I guess. <laughs> Let's go over the three questions. If you show me that you've learned well, I'll see if I can help you obtain the first order of grammaria. I'll make some calls. I can't promise anything. What are the answers to the three questions? Please don't show me your sausage fingers again. A sentence is like again. a horse and carriage. Because the subject and verb of the sentence go together just like a carriage and horse. Worst Benjamin a Franklin like ever. A treasure. Because you can find a treasure or the meaning in a sentence only when the words are in the right order. I blew it, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> And sentences are like music, because mixing a lot of different ideas in one sentence sounds as silly as playing a whole bunch of songs at once. It's kind of like Bonnaroo if you're all full of shrooms. <laughs> but sentences are also like elephants, because sentences with ideas that are related can be put together with connective words. The but same fewer notices in the anuses, I hope. Themselves. Congratulations, Joey. Now I have one last question for you. What happened to my waist? How is the sentence like a promotion? I don't know. Uh, elephants? Yeah. Because in Grammaria, a well-made sentence is your promotion to the first order of Grammaria. Very well done, my boy. All you now gotta I do is answer these 12 simple questions. No, no, I just wanna go home. Now it's 13. And now, HBO's Game of Thrones. <laughs> this week, the King of Grammaria is disemboweled with a flaming spear by a white walker who also uses the word literally incorrectly. <laughs> well, that was a tragic waste of monkey. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Yeah. Flinging, dressing as a cowboy, riding a dog, all wasted. Grammar ruins everything. Good night. <laughs> John Hodgman! Ladies and gentlemen, John Hodgman. John Hodgman. The severely injured John Hodgman. Lover of school teachers. We'll, uh... You're okay, John? You're gonna make it down? Should we'll, we bandage your head up? John! <laughs> He's gonna actually hurt himself. Da, 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 da. He's all right, folks. He's all right. He's John Hodgman, and he's all right. That's a relief. And uh, thank you for not kicking over the microphone stands like you normally do when you get on stage. And leaving your shoes on this time, he'll, too. No, no! Yeah, no. yeah, right, nice. He'll come up and do it. Behave. He's John Hodgman, and he's weird. <laughs> Severely injured. Guys, uh, the next short we have is actually a sequel. For those of you who, are, who saw us here at the Castro a few years ago, um, this is a sequel. It is also about safety. But unlike in the 50s, things have developed in the 20 years since. They, safety now has a champion, I think it's fair to say. Yes. And joining for us for this little demonstration, our good friend, you'll know him from BoJack Horseman, Mr. Show, No You Shut Up, and Speakeasy with Paul F. Tompkins. It is Mr. Paul, Paul F. Tompkins. Paul F. Tompkins. Our hero. Would you Hello, please, Paul. Can we just...
Paul, can we see the suit for a minute? This is a magnificent suit. Drink it in, drink it in, center stage. Strike a pose. Why we fight? You'd keep doing that, wouldn't you? He would do that Hello, for an hour. You know, it's, it's pretty handy that Speakeasy with Paul F. Tompkins landed you. Because <laughs> when you're talking about Speakeasy, do you mean that Rolling Stone show, Speakeasy? <laughs> yes. On PBS? Oh, wow. Where you get to see things like John Mellencamp interviewed by Jan Wenner? Wow. <laughs> is, is this a new thing? The, this the, is a new thing, yeah. I've been doing this web series. I know, who cares? But uh, I've been doing it since 2012, and then I found out like a couple weeks ago, uh, Rolling Stone magazine has a new TV show called Speakeasy. Oh, assholes. Uh, without like, Paul F. Tompkins. Without. They specifically That's called the it that, yeah. right? That's the unkindest of cut of all. <laughs> they didn't have to go that far. <laughs> But it's this idea that, like, I, I guess we're not a thing, I guess. Yeah, you're not even <laughs> a thing. <laughs> Google turned up one result, sir, but who cares? <laughs> I also want to mention that this is auspicious up here because you now are the host of a show called Know You Shut Up. Have you seen this show? It's true. See the show! That's, that sounds like the, the right amount. <laughs> it's <laughs> soon to be a Rolling Stone series. <laughs> but Know You Shut Up. <laughs> It's a news panel show uh, with Paul and a bunch of puppets. Okay, so the auspicious thing is that... that that's messed up. Mike is surrounded by his former puppeteers, and so now we have two humans surrounded by puppeteers on the same stage it feels the same pretty time. sweet, doesn't it, Paul? It's like coming home. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a good place to be. I feel like I should kneel down and put my hand up and just do it like this from now on. Who doesn't feel that way, am I, I right? Know. No, I know. Mean, I'm a bit of a Samantha. At this point in the show, anything could happen. Puppeteering. You started I'm sounding here. like the grandma guy, too. <laughs> who is the guy? Whose voice were we doing there? It sounds like Edwin. 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 The guy I in Mary Poppins. I love to laugh yeah. loud and long. <laughs> and to discount Edwin for sure. <laughs> Edwin had gross lips, too, but not quite as uh, And he was already pretty severely discounted. <laughs> it's a really fun voice to do, so if you feel like doing it during this short, you know, just please go ahead and do the Edwin voice. Throw an Edwin during this yeah. next one? Yeah, why not? Absolutely. Okay. Watch for it, guys. <laughs> we'll, we'll make a Frankenstein of this short. Yeah. <laughs> All, All right, right let's Kevin. Let's get to it, huh? All right. Kevin, it's your job, man. Uh, <laughs> let's roll safety woman in danger out of doors. Guardiana. Uh, I'm in danger, but I'm all out of doors. <laughs> I don't think that's what they mean. Roger Lanou is kind of hot. I don't think that's Roger Lanou. The Mod Squad, the early years. <laughs> I don't I think that's that 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 Stop, kids. Stop, stop, stop. Hey, kids. I guess you're glad it's Friday. Looking forward to the yeah. movie? Yeah, Kevin and I are going to go hiking up to the lake. Camp Crystal Kevin, Lake. Can't wait. Go down. I get to stay home this weekend. But I'll find something fun to do. Good for you, Terry. It's okay Sunday that your weekend is sad because you're chubby. <laughs> Speaking of school, will you ever let us go there? Oh God, what's happening? This is Miss Karen Kingsley. Youthful, gifted, attractive. A successful freelance architect. Freelance architect? <laughs> like like door-to-door -door architecting? A very special kind of woman. Perhaps more special than you can imagine. Yeah, probably. My imagination sucks. I also lack object permanence. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. See you Monday. Bye. Okay. Uh-oh. A lot of other kids got hit while I was chatting. I better split. Oh, boy. Jesus. Uh-oh. Hope this road doesn't lead to the master's place. Karen was returning from a visit to her favorite Aunt Margaret in the small township of Springfield. She's got an Aunt Marge in Springfield. Karen is a long lost Simpson. Oh no, a Boston novel is coming. Damn alien overlights, turn off your brights. Ma 
Mars needs freelance architects. Oh, forget the spaceship. Sounds like the church organist is slowly dying. I'd better help. Those monsters, they're turning her into a blacklight poster. Run, Karen, before you're sold at Spencer's Gifts. We are the heroes. From planet we Helium. You only good for all We are even more annoying than Daleks. To the young people of your world is soon to be given the task of new building. This is all leading up to some black Nike suicide cult, right? Aware. Alert. Alive. A liability lawsuit will be avoided this way. Be their guardian. Receive the ancient ring of the three torches. You shall call it precious and eat raw fish in a cave. <laughs> Receive its knowledge, Karen Kingsley. So anyway, how's Karen it, Margaret? Become the safety shield, which freezes time and space. And serves as Oscar the Grouch's roof. <laughs> That's it, sound it out. You're doing great. From one point in space to... Nah, I'm messing with you. It's a battery-operated karaoke mic that plays Christmas songs. The reversal ray, which makes time and space move backwards. Got anything that moves time forwards? Like, right about now, please? And he calls Guardiana. Literally the most powerful being on earth. Now go help kids cross the street. And that is how Karen Kingsley became safety woman. And how educational short makers filled three minutes of time without teaching anything. <laughs> Nothing says hike into the lake like plaid sack slacks and a matching plaid kangle. Plaid sacks. Those <laughs> grizzly thought. Oh, oh plaid sorry. Sacks. Floated an air biscuit there. It was really bad. Oh, dear God, man. That's a dense one. You could cut it with a knife. Oof. Here it is. Just toss Fredo's body over the side there. <laughs> Got to clear it out. What are these? Oh, they're for kids. Uh, you're pretty buoyant, right, Carl? <laughs> Are you ready to shove off? All right. And are you ready to jam it up? Oh, I see what you're saying. Are you ready? <laughs> All right, let's the Defiant Ones Babies, Saturday mornings on NBC. <laughs> well, the first season of The Deadliest Catch was pretty slow paced. <laughs> yep, spending a day on the lake with your best friend should be a grim, silent business. Yes. Okay, if I'm gonna get up on water skis, you're gonna have to do a little better than that. <laughs> Farewell and adieu to ye fair Spanish ladies. Stop that, you know your Quint impression makes me scared. Tie a sheep shank. No. Now they're starting to look like hamburgers and hot dogs to each other. <laughs> My hat flew off unnaturally, somehow pulling me with it. I'm finally free, ha ha! I'm a boat. The boat's drifting away! Oh my god, I got so busy I never ate lunch. <laughs> My favorite Highlander movie. Eh, too late. Still gotta try for insurance purposes, though. Yeah. 
It's like a less stupid version of Tom Cruise and Edge of Tomorrow. Why do you know? <laughs> Stacy woman, we'd glad to see you. Seeing you means the fish didn't eat our eyeballs. <laughs> Aware. Aware. Alert. Alert. Alive. Alive. Right, boy. And to stay alive, let's review the rules for water safety. Uh-huh. Learn to swim from a qualified... Your punishment for failure is repeated dunking. until you know how to swim. Avoid running and horseplay around pools. And don't go to pools unless you like infectious skin diseases. Learn and practice life-saving and rescue breathing. Never go swimming or boating when you're tired. And don't, don't eat shellfish near a garden hose. Or right after yes, either. safety woman. Wait, what? Just never do dive it. Never into water unless you know beforehand how deep the water is. Because obstacles and never go against a Sicilian when death is on the line. Never swim or boat in an area where there's no one around to help you. And never go boating without a life jacket on. Unless you're drinking, then they kind of cramp your style. We really pooped. Yeah, we were dumb. No, boys, you just made a mistake. One I don't think you'll ever make again. Yeah. Once your lengthy prison terms are done. Get out of doors, you feel free. But we're never free of the dangers around us. We've oh always God, guys, she's right. Alert. I feel there awful. There was a hiker here last week, for example. Well, he came prepared. He had on good hiking shoes. A.K.A. nun shoes. He carried a snake bite kit and a canteen of water. He had a jacket in his pack in case he got cold. He brought a knife to kill a bear and live in its body he cavity. He of the area. But he made a mistake. He didn't bring he a the spare arm. He broke the rule of safe hiking. Never hike alone. Whenever you hike, tell a responsible person where you're going. He decided to do a little climbing. After that, he thought he'd talk throat dip to bed to bed. Kevin just had a stroke. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kevin Murphy having a stroke. He went beyond his limit. No! no. Kevin, stop having help. a stroke. Since he was alone, no one could hear him. Help! Help! Are there any women wearing Mylar pantsuits nearby? Help! Any? Super sorry, had it set to obliterate. Wow. I can't even fake being interested in that. (laughs) Yes, but even safety women can't be everywhere. That's why everyone must practice safety. You never know when she'll be busy freelance architecting. Hey, Chip, can I ride your mini bike around the black ones? While shooting my gun? Kids our age. You're not allowed to ride around on the block. It's illegal for kids our age to be riding around on the streets. Hell, we're lucky they let us walk on it. We suck. after I get it adjusted, my dad and I are going to go up to Uncle Jack's ranch. And up there is private property, so it's okay for us to ride it. Take me with you. I'll ask your dad. He'll let me. I saved his life in Nam. He wouldn't even let you get on it without the proper equipment. What equipment? So this is still a story. Safety woman is telling those dumb boat kids, right? Yeah. Boots, gloves, leather jacket. Leather helmet. hat, leather jock strap. Wow, your dad is interesting. You fall down a lot, huh? Even the best riders take spills, Terry. Uh, uh, that's uh, I'm a hipster. Uh, 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 Keep your old mini bike. Don't ask to borrow my skateboard, Jeff. Damn, gambled and lost. Shoot <laughs> him! Look out! Look out! I must leave. Oh, no. As she takes time to do her catchphrase, the kid is embedded in the car's grill. Tony Hawk tried to take out the competition. <laughs> my skateboard. Guardiana, you saved me. And you yes, owe me Terry, a skateboard. But that was too close. <laughs> And our town does have a paved area set aside for skateboarding. And if I'm not mistaken, it's only four blocks from where we're standing right now. You don't deserve to be alive, is what I'm getting at. You won't endanger pedestrians. Helmets and pads are required, so everyone can have fun without the risk of serious injury. Or the risk of shirts. (laughs) Boy, Terry, 
You almost blew it, but good that time. By this much. If Guardiana now, had... Jeff. Leave the shaming to me, Junior. God, sometimes the only way to avoid danger is to stay away from the places where danger is at. An abandoned car might look like fun. Does it? Jagged edges, broken glass, and other hidden dangers. Me! What other places should we stay away from, Jeff? The railroad tracks. Yep, there's Joe Biden mooning us out the window. What else? Power lines. Right. Jeff is such a sucker. I don't like Jeff. Terry? Places where they're building new houses and things. Sentient lumber will try to murder you. What <laughs> else? Or dirty old bacon lots like on Peach Street. Hey, Nick Nolte's house. Yeah, how's it going, That's kids? right. Being alert means staying away from those places. Every town has parks and playgrounds and places where you can have fun safely. Also bars. Don't forget. You see, Terry, here you can have fun and not have to worry about traffic. These kids are worrying about traffic, as it turns out, but they don't have to. My problem is I keep forgetting important things, like being alert. No, we all forget Terry. I've forgotten Terry it already. Who is she talking to? Alert, and there are lots Sing, of Terry. That have to look out for too. That's why we will have safety clubs like the Danger Dodgers. Then maybe I should join one while I'm still in one piece. I've got to grow up to be Andy Richter. Terry, you're going to... Safety woman. Aware, alert, alive. Ah, transported inside a volcano, I'm dead. Hey, Ms. Kingsley. You'll never guess what happened last Saturday. Oh, really? Well, I'd like to hear all about it. Oh, sure, Miss Kingsley. We went fishing. And hey, why'd you turn away? Who are you gesturing at? Wait, you are clearly safety woman signaling to someone we can't see. You're a fraud, Miss Kingsley. You're a really creepy fraud. <laughs> I win again, kids. And there's nothing you can do about it. Our short film is over, but and they're running the credits. The short film? You put us in a short film? Yeah. That's right. It's true. Your souls are mine. But stay safe, kids. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Paul F. Tompkins. Paul F. Tompkins! I swear we will... Well, guys, I'll just be on my way. Thanks oh, for having no. me. It was good Whoa. to see everybody. Oh, Paul! Oh, wait a minute, and what's young going man? on? Get the vaudeville hook. You forgot your bowler hat and cane for that routine, Paul. Don't you go anywhere, Paul. We would like Paul to stick around because, and actually we would like everybody to come up, all of our guests. The whole gang. It's the like the end of a Wes Anderson movie. Right. <laughs> That's right. We are not Just, done with this setting up a room business, folks. Seven, 7,000 less percent tweet. Mr. Hodgman would not let us be done with this setting up a room thing. No. So he come likes, on up, folks. He likes it that much. Oh, we, ha we have some, uh, actually we have some gifts, too. Well, we have we some thank you organized. gifts. We, uh, we like to do little giveaways of our DVDs. We have mic. lovely microphones for our guests here. So while we're uh, getting ready here, I'm going to give away some of our DVDs. Uh, here's one of Scooby-Doo versus WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's one of my DVDs that I don't watch anymore. Does anyone care for that? I, I think, Paul, this is for you. Scooby-Doo uh, versus WrestleMania. 27 dresses. WrestleMania. I, I didn't even open it. Todd, would you like that? No matter who wins, we lose. Uh, this is an old Wii game, Sean Johnson Gymnastics. Uh, that sounds Janet. That sounds like sounds, Janet. That's, that's yeah. a Janet thing. John Hodgman, I have Kenny and Dolly once upon a Christmas for you. Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. Is that, did everyone get any, everything? I, did everyone get everything? <laughs> Cole, we, we saved the best for you, Cole. Steve Martin as Sergeant Bilko. Oh. <laughs> Oh, wait, oh, wait, no. Here is the actual job. best. Nice. Oh, a, Christmas, off. a Christmas gift for you from Phil Spector. <laughs> <laughs> the Christmas gift being he does not murder you. I think we all want a file share on that it one, It is a please. small piece of lead traveling at a very rapid speed. <laughs> I like That's that this was uh, fourteen ninety eight, and then it was slashed down to five ninety nine, and now it's fifty percent off of that five ninety nine. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> this must be the, the ultimate club card romantic price. Comedy. There's a thing under there that says "We'll <laughs> pay you right to there. take this." <laughs> the the, the beloved step. Catherine Hagel. <laughs> Well, we got a lot to get through, guys. I don't know, Todd is, is Todd, no, Todd is captivated with 27 dresses there, I can see. Yes. It's apparently charming and sweet. 
He's taken by the magic. <laughs> <laughs> May I ask uh, John Hodgman? Yeah. Whom do you like more, uh, the young teacher from setting up a room, oh boy. or safety woman, either in or out of her secret identity? You, you can have safety woman, Paul. It's fine. <laughs> That's what I'd hope you'd say, John. Yeah. What a double date this will be. I could feel, I could feel the vibes between you and safety woman. What? I don't want to get in the way of that. Once we locate <laughs> those two 80-year-old women... <laughs> <laughs> and smooth it over with our wives. We're going to have a wild time. I like the, I like the old guy from Grammaria. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was, was kind of like John C. Riley was haunted by a gay ghost. I loved it. <laughs> it was great. It was great. <laughs> he wow. had a raw sexuality that nobody wanted. Yeah. <laughs> I think Paul F. has a new impression to do. So... Uh. <laughs> Well, um, all right, shall we get on with it? Shall we? We have a room to set up. Let us please roll, roll part it. two. Part two, can everybody see the scripts there? Yes. Part two of setting up a room. Roll it. Seriously, roll it, please. I really need to part see it. We don't have any more jokes about hot dead women. <laughs> please roll the film. Yes. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, I do. Part two of setting up a room. Previously, on setting up a room. <laughs> My hands are tied. Oh, God, I'm so weak. Damn this room. A lot of people died that day. Yeah. Oh, hi, children. I'm your substitute teacher. No, no. Let's go to recess. Ha, ah, come on. Let's go. What the hell is going on? <laughs> this is a global tell link. Prepaid call from... The you glorious, insane bitch! <laughs> up and now, the conclusion of setting up a room. Yeah. Good job, Connor. We'll, we'll start by placing these tall cabinets against the wall. Okay. No, come again. With the plan as a guide, the next step is to rough out each area. <laughs> I roughed out my the area during intermission. To start with. <laughs> Creepy narrator. Because active block play this requires is, this ample is my space. favorite part so far. Let's take it down your way till it lines up here. Oh, wow. Yeah, I got it. I got it, Jill. I got it, Jill. Jill, I got it. God damn it, Jill. <laughs> Placing the tall cabinets against the wall affords an unobstructed view of the area. The filth on the windows now, gently diffuses use the lights. The lower one as <laughs> I can't believe this pilot didn't get picked up. <laughs> this, is this is just like a fast-paced version of the slower British show. <laughs> Using the low cabinets as dividers provide separation without isolation. Isolation is what the and shame closet is for. And enable you to see for. the children as they work and play. Now then, uh, the chairs have to go out. And I'll move this... Case of Seagram wine coolers. The berry ones are great. Now, what next? Well, I think we need more storage. I think we'll use this as a divider and we'll put it over here. Okay? We'll push it. Come on, push it, you load. Further delineation of the area sets limits without imposing them too rigidly and separates the block play from the mainstream of traffic. Oh, yeah, after snack time, it's like the 101 in oh, here. Oh, here are the block accessories. Oh, good. That just made my whole year. <laughs> oh. We're going to have a good supply. Oh, it looks like we have another half set. Nice new ones, too. Smooth. No, God, don't do that. No, 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 no. Keep doing it. No, 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 Keep no, no, doing no. it. No, no. Oh. We'll have to start out the old ones and uh, pull out those that are damaged, such as this. Should we do that now? Just like no. the students. Um, let's wait. First, we want to rough out the other area. Okay. Don't make waves. Just get through this. If we move some of the pieces around, it will give us a better idea as to how housekeeping is going to shape up. Let's move this piece first. Then move it back. Uh, Second. And use it as a divider between the kitchen and the bedroom. All right? Swing it around. Oh, it's like dancing. I've never danced. <laughs> Creating two rooms in housekeeping 
gives a realistic setting to the children's dramatic play. The works of Mr. David Mamet will be featured this year. Be Always time. be storing. Now, let's get the bedroom things out of here first. Then figure out what to tell parents when they ask why there's a bedroom. (laughs) (laughs) And as always, remember to lift with your elbows. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Needs some repair. The dolls really shattered the headboard last night, I guess. Uh, Was that inappropriate? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, now the camera's still on, so we I guess we better keep doing shit. Uh, I don't know. Area. So let's move this out. I think this is our largest one. Let's move this out. Uh, I hate improv. Let's put it over here. Let's Just good. write a script. Right. Heavy. Ooh, the C words are going to start flying any minute now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now then, uh, put the sink on our largest area. Oh, what, your ass? Go! <laughs> oh. I feel bad. I feel bad, guys. I feel bad. With adequate working space for each unit. (laughs) Ideally, butted directly against the extremely hot furnace. Uh, Make sure the doors don't interfere. Fine. Oh, God. I was worried that six feet of open floor space wasn't enough room for that door. Humpty Dum Dum setting up the wall, just like the wall of my heart. Humpty Dum Dum Dum. I'll never love. Mm-hmm. Mm, it's good. I'm starting to worry this is never going to interrupt into a bout of foxy boxing. Oh, sorry, Cole. <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm not worried. It's perfect. And as planned, the backs of the cabinets form a wall for the house. As planned. And the shelves. <laughs> A storage space for table games. Yes, as planned, as if that plan could somehow have gone wrong. Well, I tried to move the bookcase, but then it suddenly evaporated into a poisonous mist. I tried to form a wall with one, and the Germans came out of nowhere in a blitzkrieg. No survivors, man! Whoa, whoa, whoa where, where's this going? Oh, they're putting the chairs on the floor. Right? Yeah. Brilliant. Crafty, ladies. <laughs> Masters. But can the oven and fridge doors still open? I need to know! Oh God. Very good. Let's see. Bedroom? Bedroom suggestion met with icy silence. I think the refrigerator should be over this way. Line it up yeah, with the edge. Together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A little more. Don't Bad. forget your place in this operation, dearie. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, that big shy should have played over the titles here. at the beginning of the thing. <sighs> Thank you. Oh, man, and I'll put the mirror back here so that it can be used with dressing. Well, dressing implies undressing, right? This thing's really starting to creep me out. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, souvenir. Why don't we get that screen from over there? Put it along here. Use this divide. Good. All right? Yeah. Mm. Can you carry it? Sure. I'll just stand here and plan how to criticize your performance with the other teachers later. <laughs> Mm, not very good. Mm. Now, what big pieces do we have missing in here? Well, we still need the rocking chair. Okay. And the ironing board we'll have to put together later on. Okay. Later on? Oh, I pray we're all dead before then. <laughs> Because you can still get the carriage in I think there. so. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, you know what? Let me just fix it. Okay. More. Great. <laughs> like so. That looks great. Yeah, you really vastly improved it. I'm learning so much from you. It's beginning to look like home. (laughs) Yep, looks like home. And I do plan to live here. My husband changed the locks yesterday. (laughs) But wait, there's more! Would you put this easel over here to make room for the other one? Okay. All right, I'll go get it. Yes, this will be a lovely corner in which to crush the children's creative dreams. (sighs) Hmm. Can you help there? Oh, please. Thank you. Uh, a little late, but thanks. Now, try the door. Make sure the door, there's plenty of room. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, the oven and fridge doors remain totally unchecked since the addition of the chairs. What the hell? <laughs> I think so. I like this one because it has a tray for their newsprint so that they can help themselves. So I can sob uncontrollably in the shame closet. Now, do you think I'll have room to pull on a clay and craft table? 
I will murder you! No, we can do it now. If it gets in our way, we can take it out and store the clay in buckets after the in fact, the more I think about it, all these decisions could easily be done undone later if needed. Maybe this doesn't really require the planning level of the Normandy invasion. Ah, <laughs> uh, don't touch that dial! I hadn't noticed this pegboard. Oh, I just made up the most boring sentence ever. <laughs> How many corners does this place have? <laughs> <laughs> Most of these seem to be for housekeeping. Should we move them now? Yes. Oh, oh, dare the we? <laughs> so we can move out the woodworking bench and bring in the cabinet for the record player and also the reading table. Okay. All right. Or as a person might say, let's take the boxes off this table. <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, good laugh. Yeah. Let's see who's laughing when I make you a goddamn pariah in the faculty lounge. It's on the craft table. Cash register. Gosh, that was a fun heist. <laughs> now. You think I can pick this up and throw it like the chief and one flew over the, the cuckoo's nest? <laughs> Let's close up these shelves. But how? How? What are you doing? Oh, God, thank you. There you go. <sighs> There's a pistol in my hair bun. <laughs> Placed on top of the open shelves, the library unit provides display space for the books. Mostly tattoo magazines. With storage space beneath for puppets and other supplementary language materials. <laughs> so Jeff Dunham's act is based around supplementary language materials? Well, looks like we... This year. Okay, you know what? Cut. Cameraman just sneezed. No. I'm sorry, no, what? Keep, oh, keep rolling. No, keep rolling. No, keep rolling. Keep rolling. Really? Uh, go keep okay. rolling. Okay. Time is money. It isn't bolted down. <laughs> For this moment, I wish it were on wheels. Oh, yeah, do you? Listen, we're setting up a kindergarten room here. <laughs> That'll work fine for the record player. Let me make sure this door opens. Oh, God, will it? Please, <laughs> <laughs> I love you, lady. Aren't they going to consult what the, the diagram? No. <laughs> I think it needs to be up this way more so that we can... I'm going to be fetching a library table without serious planning. <laughs> this is some real Blair Witch stuff we're doing. All right. Let's put the workbench into... Uh, Okay. Oh, this is going to be one crazy year for the kids. <laughs> Workplace in Stop position. Stop spinning! We're out of control! Oh, God! Now, let's take it out from the wall so, we'll try, so they can walk around it. And also so it won't interfere with the cubbies. Oh, unless you have a better idea. Think that's fine. <laughs> what that's am I thinking? Of course you don't. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's perfect. Uh, we have to remember to get several, uh, uh, several pairs of goggles. All right, before we do any woodwork. Also, remove the safety guards from the now, radial saws. They restrict a child's imagination. Well, hang the tool board right above the wood. Above the wood? Would you want to hang it back here? No, that's too high. Bring it down so the children can reach the tools themselves. I'll measure it later. We'll take care of that. And after that bitter episode, the two never spoke to each other again. <laughs> <laughs> With the basic areas set, and equipment in place. You are ready to arrange the work and play materials. I am? <laughs> Crap, am I supposed to be set up in a room right now? Yeah, it's hard. Blocks it's hard. are stored according to size and shape, so the children can easily recognize them. Though sometimes it's fun to mess with their little heads and put some one and a quarter blocks in the one and three eighth slot. <laughs> it's good times. Would you stop showing a woman putting away blocks, please? <laughs> it's just getting please, good. Please don't stop. Keeping please materials don't stop. are displayed in an orderly manner. Well, there's a shocker! That the children will know what is available. And learn that there is a proper place for everything. Like their ideas and feelings, which belong deep down inside an orderly box, which is then stored away forever, neatly. <laughs> 
Oh, why hey! did you bother to cut away now? <laughs> John Hodgman is very happy right now. Flux! Well, why didn't we stay with her for 10 minutes? Did you see a dog carriage around? I know, right? Uh, yes, there's one in the storage closet. I also saw a lot of rat skeletons. Oh, and I'll need your help with putting the ironing board together. I'll be there in a minute. I just have the wedgies left. Oh, what she's already planning how to attack the nerds. <laughs> oh, they sent some, a family, a small family, some community helpers, and a lot of nice farm and zoo animals. I love oh, you. What? They? what? No, who's the faceless they? They're sending farm and zoo animals. Who's that? This doesn't work at all. Fuck it, let's re-diagram. <laughs> Things are beginning to look pretty good over here. Yeah, I like what I see. In every area. Getting on the Hodgman bandwagon. The underlying principle that materials be set out to stimulate and challenge the children. To stimulate the children. And as the teachers finish setting the room, <laughs> they can feel confident that they have achieved their objective. They have achieved their objective. They have placed woodworking in a protected area with the tools where the children can reach them. Tools where the children can reach them. The block corner has plenty of space away from general room traffic. Oh yeah, general room traffic. He was the real brains behind Operation Overlord. Housekeeping has two rooms, which will enable more children to participate in social play. The most popular time for wedgies. <laughs> in the painting area, four children can paint at one time. And there are adjacent tables for crafts. Crafts such as making a bud of clay <laughs> and painting and they have a weenus. For music. <laughs> and reading. Ooh, for finding out how many shades of gray there are? <laughs> I just want something interesting to happen! This is a room for learning. And occasional throwing up. It will change with the needs and interests of the children. One of them might be into fire, for example. <laughs> the degree to which it does change will be a measure of the children's growth and the room's effectiveness. And frankly, I, your narrator, am not optimistic. Let me ask my fellow narrators here in the narrator hall where we all gather and narrate. Fellow narrators, what, what do you yes. think? I, also a narrator, can only conclude that these children are doomed to a life of stupidity. Other narrators? Agreed. This mournful tune is an ode to the young minds destroyed by this poorly laid out room. Helen Catred, shame on you. Roberta Paley, have you never set up a room before? I could set up a better room for my Barca lounger wearing nothing but boxer shorts and eating a turkey club while narrating. Thank you, fellow narrators. Setting up a room. Setting up a room. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Paula Tompkins, Cole Stratton, Janet Varney, Todd Berry. John Hodgman. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Good Thank night. Thank you, our wonderful guests. Thank you. Can we take a bow? <laughs> Thank you. Come take a bow. Not for him. They're gone. Let's go. Good night. It's time for you. Tracks. Why you always gotta pick rip tracks? It's your lucky day. It's time for rip tracks. Rift tracks. Copyright by Rift tracks. All rights reserved.